Hey, welcome to today's video. My name is Brock Wonder. I am a social media strategist and street and travel photographer. And on this channel, we talk about how to live a more creative life that's both good for you and the planet. Now, it's no secret that I do a lot of street photography, especially I've been sharing that on Instagram over the last few years. And I've spent a lot of time shooting street in Toronto specifically. And every time I go out, I always think I'm gonna run out of photos or things to capture, but I'm always shocked because I always find something new to take photos of along the way. That is why in today's video, we're going to be talking about my five tips to basically always keep your ideas fresh and learn how to capture any city that you're visiting and basically living in, in a way that feels authentic to you and tells that location's story. So with that, let's jump on into tip number one. Tip number one is to avoid taking all of your photos from eye level and try to get creative when you're on location. And we'll be doing this tip at Old City Hall because there's actually three ways that you can take a photo of this iconic building in Toronto. One of them being eye level, but the other two are really making it in a way that is interesting to you and tells that location story based on how you're experiencing it. So why I say to not take photos at eye level is because we see everything from this perspective all of the time. So taking a photo at that vantage point is not as interesting as if you were to take it from a different sort of angle or perspective that is not commonly seen when we're literally living our lives. So the easiest way to do that is to actually take the photo low to the ground or use some sort of framing element to make that location more interesting to your viewer and engage them more quickly. Old City Hall is a perfect location for that because the iconic photos that you can get creative with are all taken low to the ground. So with that said, let's go get this photo. Now the creative photo that's taken in this location is commonly with the yellow line leading up to Old City Hall. But the real photo that I wanna take is with a marker on the ground to, I think, get a better composition. All right, so tip number two is to try and capture the unique little details of the city you are visiting or that you're taking photos of. And what I like to do is to take photos along the way as I'm traveling from landmark to landmark or whatever it is that I'm doing in the city. Behind me, we have the Eaton Center Bridge, which would be a really popular photo spot if it wasn't because of it being under construction right now. But we are gonna try and get an interesting photo regardless. Why I like to do this is because these little moments, these little things in between the big landmark photos are the way that you actually tell the story of that city. So the Eaton Center Bridge might not be something that you want to take a photo of. Maybe it's a little ice cream shop that you see along the way you want to take a shot of. And when you combine these photos with the big hero shot photos, like those big locations, that leads to a more complete story that actually describes how you experience the city, how you travel the city, and when you show it to friends, it's those little unique details that made the trip special. So let's go on, capture this bridge, and then we'll go to the next spot. Okay, so we got the shot of the bridge and now we are on to tip number three and that is to look for architecture in the city that you're trying to capture. And we are in probably my favorite spot of the city to actually shoot street photography and why I like this location so much because it has a great contrast of old and new. So the building off to my right is the building that we're going to be talking about today and that is because it has very intricate details on it. And what I like to do is to basically capture in my street photography a hero shot of the location that I'm in, so a street photo that I know I can be proud of, and then I will build a photo carousel of the little details from buildings around me to really establish the mood and the atmosphere of the area I'm exploring. So we're gonna go ahead, capture this building, look for a couple of street photos along the way, and just add to the photos that we get from the day, and then we'll head on into tip number four. <laughs> So tip number four, and this is if you are exploring a tall city to make sure you grab lookup shots. The thing that you're gonna see a lot on Instagram is the classic like skyscraper shots that are just straight up to the sky. But what I like to do to really show off architecture is to grab buildings as lookups on a 45. And what's really cool about Toronto is that there are a lot of buildings where you can contrast both old and new. And the building I wanna use as an example is the One King West building because it is a old hotel right in front of the newer banks. When you look up at the building, you'll be able to see a lot of ornate details that really show off what makes the city unique. And especially when you're looking to capture architecture to add to your street photography, this is a great way to be able to do that. So I'm gonna put up a photo on the screen that is from when I shot this building building in light that I actually think shows off this building in a better sort of character, which is in like a moody, rainier scene. And then I'll show you what this building looks like right now with crisp blue skies as well. 
But either way, this is a worthwhile composition and I'll show you one more look up shot along the way to add some more compositional elements to your photos. All right, so the final tip, you know this can't be a video in Toronto without getting a shot with the CN Tower. This tip is really about finding out how to capture an iconic location in a way that is actually visually interesting. So my number one piece of advice is to actually learn some basic compositional elements for your trip. Things like leading lines, subframing elements, symmetry, repetition, just the basics so that when you're out on the street and you're traveling to a new city, you can actually be able to think about those compositions while you're out taking photos instead of just taking a photo of something that looks nice. So in this last example, we have OCAD behind me. And what's really nice about this location is there is another strip along the road that leads right towards the CN Tower. And we're gonna use that as a leading line to both capture the CN Tower in our shot, because who wouldn't want a photo of Toronto's most iconic building? And then you could also get the OCAD building in the shot at the same time and get that nice photo. So let's go grab that photo and wrap up this video. So that is gonna wrap up today's video. Of course, you can't live a creative life without learning how to capture things that are around you or building up a creative hobby. And that is why we share photography on this channel. So if you did like today's video, if you do want some more lifestyle tips, productivity tips, or just overall how to live a more creative life, please follow along. And with that, I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.